Hey everyone, do lithium batteries work in cold weather? We get asked this question all the time. Recently, an experiment was done to test lithium batteries versus their lead acid counterparts in cold weather environments. And today, we're gonna take a look at this experiment and definitively answer the question of, is lithium or lead acid better in cold weather? Lithium batteries have become a popular energy storage medium because they store a lot of energy in a lot less space compared to a lot of alternative options. But there's a common myth that lithium ion batteries don't work in cold weather, which could be a real drawback to a lot of applications. Before we get into the cold weather performance, let's talk a little bit about how batteries work. A battery is defined as an electrochemical device that stores electrical energy. Now, electrochemical means that there is a chemical reaction going on inside the cells of the battery that are storing or producing electrons. Now, this is important for batteries and temperature because the warmer it is, the faster a chemical reaction can occur. Basically, molecules are bouncing around and the warmer it gets, the faster they go. And when they slam into each other, they need to have what's called the activation energy to actually create a chemical reaction by breaking bonds. The warmer it is, the more molecules have that higher activation energy. And when they slam together, those bonds can be broken. So the colder it gets, the activation energy doesn't actually change, but there's fewer molecules that have the energy to actually create that reaction. Now, every chemical reaction has a different activation energy, and it's gonna behave differently in different temperature environments. Lithium ion batteries have a completely different chemical reaction than their lead acid counterparts. So how does this compare when operating in cold temperatures? We've commonly heard people say that lithium batteries just don't work below freezing, but this is usually an unfounded statement, but I think I know where it's coming from. Lithium batteries do have one drawback over some alternative types in cold weather, and that's that with a high charging load, they can plate lithium metal to the anode and potentially damage the battery and or even cause it to short out. Because of this, many manufacturers implement charging parameters that prevent the battery from taking a charge or even shut it down completely if it is below a certain temperature. It's been said that you have to keep lithium batteries warm for them to function, and many people install them in enclosed spaces because you can. We keep ours in the center of our RV since they don't off-gas and there's no challenge with actually where you install them. You can put them anywhere, so a heated space isn't a bad idea but it doesn't mean that they have to be heated to actually function. So while there may be limitations to charging, there's nothing inherent in the chemistry of a lithium ion battery that says that it can't actually do its job and produce power well below freezing. Recently, a study was conducted by Battleborn Batteries, makers of lithium ion batteries, where they tested the batteries well below freezing against their lead acid counterparts. They wrote a white paper all about this that you can access over on our website on our accompanying blog post or over on their website as well. Now in their paper, they outline what they did in their experiment. And what they were trying to accomplish was see how the Pukert effect changed with temperature. Now the Pukert effect or Pukert's law is something that was discovered back in the 1800s by Wilhelm Pukert. And it basically states that as the current draw on a battery increases, the capacity that it can actually produce decreases. This is something that is known to affect lead acid batteries significantly more than lithium, meaning that if you need a high capacity battery, you're going to take a high draw from it. You're going to get a lot less power out of the batteries. What this experiment aimed to do is to see how that effect changed as the temperature dropped. What they did is they take two banks of batteries, two 200 amp hour lead acid batteries and two 200 amp hour lithium batteries and put them in a freezer. They then charged the batteries all the way up per the manufacturer's recommendations. Once charged, they discharged the batteries at three different discharge rates, 30, 50, and 80 amps discharge. They then repeated this test over four different temperature ranges. A room temperature around 67 to 72, cold around 33 to 37, even colder at 26 to 30 degrees, and the coldest they went down into the teens around 13 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. 
they discharge the batteries down to the manufacturer recommended cutoff voltage. And for the lithium ion batteries, this is all the way discharged until they automatically shut off because of the battery management system built into them. For the lead acid batteries, they cut it off at a recommended discharge voltage, which is 50% of the rated capacity per the manufacturer of the lead acid batteries. At room temperature, the batteries perform pretty much as expected. The lithium ion batteries produced their complete rated capacity and the lead acid batteries produced, well, significantly less than that, but that is due to the Pukert effect. Usually lead acid batteries are rated at a 20 hour discharge with a very, very small amount of discharge, but they were discharging at the lowest 30 amps, which is significantly higher than what the rating would be for those lead acid batteries. So they produced significantly less. If you were discharging 50% of a 200 amp hour bank, you should be able to get around 100 amp hours capacity at a 20 hour discharge, but because they were discharging at 30 amps, they only got 63 amp hours out of their 200 amp hour bank. For each temperature range, they repeated the test three times. Then they charged the batteries at that same temperature and calculated how much amp hour capacity the batteries took while they were charging. All of this data is available in their white paper, but what happened as they started to take the batteries down in temperature is that the batteries started to perform not as well, which is to be expected because the chemical reactions aren't happening as quickly. Their test showed that the lithium ion batteries were able to produce significantly more power as the temperature dropped than the lead acid counterparts. It also showed that as the temperature dropped, the Pukert effect was exacerbated for the lead acid batteries, not as much so for the lithium ion batteries. At the coldest temperature range, the lead acid batteries with the highest discharge were only able to produce 8% of the capacity they originally started with at room temperature. That's when operating down in the teens. The lithium batteries, however, dropped only to 80% of their original capacity at room temperature with the highest discharge. What this basically is saying is that if you're trying to use a high draw application in cold weather, the lithium batteries are going to significantly outperform the lead acid counterparts. Now I do have a couple critiques of this experiment. First of all, they were measuring amp hours produced instead of really energy. Amp hours is a power rating and their terminology was all correct, calling it power, but power is the rate of energy flow, whereas energy is the actual capacity to do work and a useful number to use in figuring out how much they can actually produce. I would have preferred to see this done in watt hours produced, but knowing how lithium functions, I believe this would have pushed even more in favor of the lithium ion batteries over the lead acid because the lead acid tend to have more of a voltage sag under load compared to lithium ion. And as the voltage drops and the amperage stays the same, it's going to produce even more power. So I don't know what those numbers would look like, but I think that if they had done it that way, it still would be in favor of the lithium batteries. The other critique I have is that they didn't really give lead acid a chance for what it is actually rated at. They didn't discharge it for that 20 hour period, which is kind of absurd, so I understand why. But they also didn't give it any chance to recover. Lead acid batteries have something called the recovery effect, where the voltage will actually come back up after a load is removed. This is due to the chemical reaction not permeating the battery as quickly as, say, a lithium ion battery, and over time it can actually recover some of its voltage and produce more energy. If, say, the discharge was on and off over a period of time, I think that the lead acid would have performed a little bit better. My last thought on this experiment, and something they did showcase in their paper, is that they could not charge the lithium ion batteries at the coldest temperature range in the teens. They did, however, charge the lead acid batteries at that cold temperature. But if you take a look at the data, it both didn't take as much energy or produce as much energy in those cold temperatures. So if you're able to just warm the lithium batteries up just enough to take a charge, they would significantly outperform the lead acid batteries in all regards. So what does this mean in a real world application? Well, it means that lithium is really a great choice for cold weather, as long as the battery is warmed up just enough when it needs to take a charge. 
We personally have used lithium batteries in cold weather in many of our travels, including all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. In one of the first packs I built, I installed a heated pad on the battery and also put temperature sensors inside the battery pack. When the temperature dropped too low, it clicked on this heated pad and used some of the energy of the battery to get it back up before it needed to take a charge. This is something I expect manufacturers will start implementing directly in batteries for cold weather applications. Alternatively, we've also installed batteries in enclosed compartments near a heated space. While it's not directly heated, bleed heat kept it just above freezing and enabled the batteries to function properly. In a small enclosed space, it's usually not hard to either throw a heated wrap around the batteries and or something like a, a heated stick or any other heat source that just provides enough heat to keep them above freezing. In our experience, when the batteries do get cold and ours really never drop much below 40 degrees, we really didn't see much degradation in how much power we could get out of them, if at all. In conclusion, lithium ion batteries are a great choice in cold weather. They just need to be warmed up to charge. And truthfully, they can do that with their own energy. It is critical that a lithium battery has those cold weather protections in place to prevent charging in cold weather, however. If you're building a pack or the manufacturer doesn't have this in place, it is definitely possible to damage the batteries. So it's something that is a hard limit on lithium ion batteries. Keep this in mind when thinking of your personal electronics, as sometimes they don't have those temperature limits built into them. Charging, say, camera batteries or uh, a cell phone should never be done below freezing. This could shorten the battery life or even cause an internal short that could cause a catastrophic failure and even potentially a fire. For larger storage applications, always select batteries that have those cold weather protections built in place and add heat to make sure that you can charge them. Thank you so much for joining me today as we learned about lithium batteries and cold weather. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you all next time.